So we're on chapter 70 and here on the Story Mountain. So we've already met the Ricos and now the 69 is the defective robot. We know which one that is, Roz. The Ricos say, look, you're defective. Asking questions, look, no sh foot on the end of that leg. And chapter 70 is called The Hunt Begins. It says, the hunt begins. While his flock distracted the Ricos, Brightbill darted around behind them and desperately searched for buttons. He had once shut down his own mother with a click, and now he would do the same thing to the intruders. He's so smart. But he found no buttons on these robots, only smooth surfaces. Clearly, the Ricos were not designed to be shut down so easily. Giant hands swung through the air, and the geese were swatted away. Loudwing was plucked by her foot and flung to the ground. She crawled into the weeds as others scrambled up and over the trees. A quick scan by the robots revealed that Roz was gone. The three, the three Ricos turned and marched back to the airship. The door hummed open, and the robots disappeared inside. And when they stepped back into the meadow, each was holding a silver rifle in his hands. The hunt for Roz was on. Without speaking, the Ricos marched away from one another, fanning out in their standard search pattern. Rico 1 marched straight ahead toward the southern tip of the island. Rico 2 marched straight up the mountainside, and Rico 3 marched straight into the forest. This is terrible. We have to keep reading. Chapter 71, The Forest Assault. Now, forest assault, you know what assault means. Peter Brown is going to tell us. It happens in the forest, for one thing. And it says, right here, it says, The Forest Assault, Rico III, marched through the forest with steady, stomping strides. His blocky head swiggled from side to side, scanning for any sign of Roz. But he was distracted. You see... Everywhere the Rico went, he was met by shrieking animals. He didn't know it, but he was in the midst of a coordinated assault. So what's happening is these robots think that they're just going to walk onto that island, snatch Roz, take her back. But the animals are organizing to resist. So they are not only resisting, but they are assaulting. So they're going to try to actively stop these robots from taking Roz. Swooper hooted the orders from the above. Hawks, sparrows, owls, dive into in front of his eyes. Fink barked orders from below. Hares, weasels, foxes, dashed between his legs. The forest was seething with an army of wild animals distracting the robot, luring the terrible thing deeper into their trap. It's a trap. Chit-chat leaped out from the branches and clawed at the robot's eyes, yelling, Anyone who shows up on our island and tries to take my friend's mother away has a big problem, which is me. She's got a big heart. She's got a big heart. Then she leaped back into the branches. The robot pointed his rifle at the squirrel and pulled the trigger. A blazing beam of light shot through the forest and sent the tree limbs crashing to the ground. It grazed poor Chit Chat singeing the end of her tail, but she ignored the pain and scurried up to the safety of the canopy. With each stride, the ground grew a little softer and the robot sank a little deeper until he was up to his waist in thick, heavy muck. His churning legs slowed to a stop and he stood there computing whether to move forward or backward. Rico three was now an easy target. Begin the bar bombardment, ordered Swooper, and the sky darkened as, swar as a swarm of birds descended from the treetops. They swooped past the robot and splattered his face with their droppings. Bird after bird swooped and splattered, and the Rico's eyes were instantly caked in filth. Don't let up, screeched the owl. Give it everything you've got. There seemed to be an endless stream of birds with an endless amount of droppings. Rico III let go of his weapon and wiped his filthy face with both hands. That was the moment that the fuzzy bandits had been waiting for. They dashed out from the weeds, snatched the rifle with their nimble hands, and dragged it away. Tawny and Crown Point looked on from the underbrush, but Buck lowered his head. 
and the raccoons carefully placed the rifle upon his antlers. Then the deer and the raccoon slipped into the shadows, and by the time Rico III realized his weapon was missing, it was too late. He let out a sad electronic tone, and then, as the birds continued their bombardment, the robot turned and blindly trunched, trudged back through the muck. It was now time for the final stage of the plan. Broadfoot, the bull moose, emerged from the trees and stood directly in the path of the blinded robot. Rico III had no idea that his every step brought him closer to the mighty animal. You need to know that moose are very big. Very, very big. This is going to be good. When the robot was in range, Broadfoot turned and kicked back with his powerful hind legs, and there was a sharp crack, and the dung sprayed from Rico's head. The moose kicked again, crack, and the robot's head flopped to one side. A tear in his neck exposed a tangle of silver tubes, but Rico III's legs kept pumping, so Broadfoot kept kicking. He pounded the robot's head with his heavy hooves, denting and crushing it into an ugly shape. And with one final crack, the head broke loose, soared through the air, and squelched into the muck. The headless robot fizzled and spoke, and his, ro his legs ground to a halt, and he never moved again. Now, never means he never moves again. So that's the way to turn them off, maybe, is that you have to kick their heads off? You have to take their heads off? They don't have buttons readily available? We don't know because the next chapter is called The Mountain Rumble. Now, we saw the forest assault. The Mountain Rumble, some kind of battle is going to take place on the mountain. We'll have to read that next.